Um, uh, but a lot of sources are claiming that they may have rejected the idea of uh, military intervention. If that is true, Chief, if that is true, how does that affect the plans that ECOWAS is making? How much can the AUPSC influence what happens next? Well, uh, before I talk about the authority of um, the Peace and Security Council, I think I need to address another authority here, a, a, a higher authority, and that's you yourself. <laughs> uh, I think the whole of Lagos has been uh, paying tribute to you, and I would be remiss if I don't uh, add to the voices. Um, I've already told you um, off air how I feel about the whole thing, but let me just say here uh, that uh, in my opinion, and this is me speaking as someone who has um, consumed radio in one form or the other um, for the last three and a half decades, all the way from the BBC World Service in, uh, on my father's lap, you have transformed Nigerian radio in fundamental, like, indisputable ways. And I want to thank you for what you've done uh, specifically for Current Affairs Radio. You have made current affairs cool. You have made current affairs accessible. You have made discussing these things demystified. And that's, I think, the most powerful thing you've done because there's usually a lot of if you know, you know in these conversations. And it's done partly on purpose by people in power to keep people from understanding. It's done partly by your colleagues who also want to appear mysterious. Uh, but I think what you've done is you have shown that these things that are important for everyone can be understood by everyone. And that is a tribute to your astounding intellect Aww. because these are difficult conversations. These are difficult concepts. But I think the, the, the hallmark of a great intellect is it, they, they are able to take a very complex ideas and break it down in a way that even a five-year-old could understand it. And that's what you do here every day. Um, this, and I think I myself, I come to you for hard facts. I come to you for content. And uh, I am also just in awe of your amazing work ethic because I know how hard you work to make this show a success. You are a rigorous and ruthless professional. Um, I think the number of times that, you know, you've reached out like, you know, over one particular issue, or come and talk about this, or you know, do this. Like the number of times that uh, you are on background doing your research, uh, planning your shows. Uh, look at all the different. I, I, I used to listen to this segment before you joined. Look at all the different segments you've created from Madam Landlord, Checkpoint, Balogu and Broad. Like all my all my friends in business listen to Balogu and Broad. No. Right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> we all listen to Balogo and Broad. Oh. And the funny thing, and, and the great thing about your show is anybody who I have told, go and listen to Hard Facts, has always come back to me and said, oh, now nah, Hard Facts, Hard Facts. They will not be even putting Hard Facts to me and carrying Hard Facts on their head like they are the ones who, who, who found it as if I'm not the one who introduced them to it. <laughs> Uh, and, I th and, I, and I think finally, finally, not to take up all the time. I thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> we, are, we, are, we have to talk about Niger, but I want to also thank you for I beg to differ. And I want to thank you for the role you allowed me to have in, in that, in that program and in the lives of all those young, young children. It's, it's been one of the proudest things in my life. And thank you for making intellectual discourse, intellectual debate, uh, a mainstream thing through these children. And thank you for showing Nigeria that we can expect more of our children. We can expect them to understand these very difficult concepts and deliver them in a way that leaves all of us going wow. And that's what you always do, Sandra, every day. You leave all of us going wow. <laughs> and even now in your departure, we are saying wow. So thank you. Okay. Um, thank you very much, Chief. Those are those are really kind. Um, those are very kind things to say. Um, let's just move on to Niger. <laughs> let's move on to Niger. So I'm hearing a sound, but I'm not sure what it is. It's like a like a bubble 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 sound. I don't know. Can you can you hear that, or is it just me? 
it, it sounds like it's coming from your from end. From my so end. It's a connection thing. thing. Okay. Go ahead. Um, whoa, let's talk yes. about Nije. So, <laughs> yes, yes. I remember your question. Your question was about the uh, Peace and Security Council. Oh, yes. I've, I've done what Sanwulu and every president and governor cannot do. I've silenced the pres president, Sandra. <laughs> yes. I will never forget this day. Yes. So, so the, the Peace and Security Council, right? They are actually the supreme decision-making body in terms of international intervention among African states. So even like, you know, we talked about this um, ECOWAS standby force, which um, the heads of government of ECOWAS want to deploy. If you look at the, um, the charters, um, which I have, that actually create and empower the ESF, it gets its power from the African Union standby force. And the African Union standby force is gets its power from the African Union Peace and Security Council by the charters that we all our countries signed. So technically, the only way the ESF can 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 operate can be deployed is if at least the AU Peace and Security Council does not object. Preferably if they approve, but at best if they don't object, or at worst if they don't object. And so if we end up really getting an on-the-record objection from the AU um, and PSC, then suddenly... Apologies about that. We seem to be having some technical um, difficulties. So um, I'm going to... Uh, uh, Lagos, apologies about that. Chief, apologies about that. I don't know what that sound is, but um, I will get the tech team to um, look at it. But I can hear you. We can hear you. We just get... Yes, um, I'm hearing you just fine. Yeah, we, 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 we yeah. just have those like interruptions with that sound there, but we'll have the te I will have tech um, take a look and, and, and um, you know solve that particular problem. Apologies about that. Go ahead, Chief. No worries. So if the PSC comes out and says, no, um, ECOWAS, you can't send troops into Niger, at least not ESF troops, not standby force troops, that's it, it's over. They can't do it. So it's it's going to be very interesting to hear what really happened at that um, PSC uh, meeting yesterday. We've not gotten any direct confirmation, lots of like um, rumor and innuendo and, you know, whispers in the corridors. But it is also instructive that up until now, there has been no official statement. It looks that really the tea leaves, but please don't um, bet based on what I'm saying. Okay. But reading the tea, it suggests to me that there was an impasse, there that was... the council couldn't, couldn't come to a definitive um, decision on it. Okay. But that in itself is saying something. If the council can't just all come out as one and say, and, yes, and say this is what we've yeah. decided, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, the, the, the ECOWAS military chiefs are insisting that a military option is still on the table and that constitutional rule will be restored by any means necessary how much of this is credible and how much of it is just you know imakwandaibo sorry how much of it is is uh, bluster you know how much of it is ah, ah you know <laughs> <laughs> it's a good question uh, uh, yeah but i think the, the, the funny thing, like we said, if the PSC is saying don't fight, then ECOWAS can't fight, right? The, that's that, It's as simple as that. So that they are, no matter what, by any means necessary, is still on the table. There's a small fine print there. There's a TNC. And that TNC is, is the African Union really on board or not? And so we, we will remain to be seen. But definitely, I mean, this is what I expect to hear from the defense chief of ECOWAS. The defense chiefs of ECOWAS are going to come out and say, yes, military option is still on the table mm. and we will deliver this because ECOWAS is in a position now where they have to be able to say we can wield the stick. Can they really wield the stick? Stay tuned, I guess. Stay tuned, I guess, chief says. Um, the defense chiefs say that uh, they are confident that every member state will contribute troops if needed, except for Cape Verde. And uh, the military regimes in Burkina Faso, Mali, Guinea, um, uh, you know, they're also in that conversation as well. But can an ECOWAS standby force without those countries 
really enforce its will in Niger, especially if the other junta decides to uh, join the other side? Yeah, so that's the point. Okay, so first of all, okay, Verde is not really the military um, consideration one way or the other. I mean, it's like, I mean, I mean, I mean, it's Cape Verde. I mean, yeah, I think my my estate security could probably take their military. <laughs> oh come but, on, uh, that's a whole I mean, country. I know. That's a whole well, country. Well, at least it will be. Well, at least it will be a fair fight. It's you know, a whole I mean, country. Fair. Come on, chief. That's a whole country. <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, Yes, but with um, Mali, Guinea, and Burkina Faso really hinting that if ESF goes into Niger, they will back up the Niger military. That's a tough one. I don't know how serious they are. Let let me let's be honest. In the same way that we don't know how serious the Eco the other Ecowas countries are about going in there to to remove Chani and put in Bazoum, we also don't know how how serious this Burkina man with his beret and the Mali and the you know, we don't know how serious they are either this could also be a lot of bluster and you know um hold me or hold me or from their side as well i think both sides are playing a game of chicken and trying to see who blinks first so there's a bit of that to have the of account but we should also note that while all of this is happening the security situation in niger republic itself is deteriorating um we had now you know the echo has also like expressed like regret uh Basically, insurgents have killed at least 17 um, Nigerian soldiers uh, because basically right now with all of this like insanity and, you know, th there was a security problem before this coup. There was like a serious fight against insurgents and militants. And, you know, the coup and all the like blowback and aftermath is getting in the way of keeping those militants in check. So that's flaring up again. And then the question now becomes, how long will that keep flaring? How high will it rise? Will that create an incentive or an impetus for the other military regimes to step into Niger? Because they are all, these, are, these Sahel West African countries are all dealing with the same general insurgency issue. And, you know, they have like a lot of like relationships to try and fight it. And so we could be in a situation where even if nobody wants a military escalation, we sort of end up with one just because of like all the like second and third order effects, which I, I don't think anyone really wants. And we heard from the junta in uh, Niger that uh, they are open to diplomatic talks after the visit from some Islamic clerics from Nigeria. How should we interpret this change in position? What do you? How should we interpret it? We can interpret it with the way something happens when someone rigs an election, right? When someone rigs an election. What you normally see is in the first few days while the rigging is ongoing, there is a lot of refusal to talk with anyone. There's a refusal to dialogue. They are they're changing results. They're inside the collection center. They're writing results. They are there. The scope is there doing what they are doing. Other parties are shouting, this is a travesty. And um, chairman, please don't accept this result. Ex-presidents are writing letters saying, oh, no, don't, um, don't accept this result. But the people doing the actual rigging, are refusing to talk to anybody or at most they say go to court then when the rigging is over and they are in office they are settled in then there is a well maybe it's time for us to move on maybe it's time for us to move forward maybe it's time for us to have a conversation maybe it's time for us to negotiate maybe we should form a government of national unity it's after you that, that's the same thing so it, it's, it's something you often see when someone seizes power in an illegal way and so, basically, what I'm saying here is probably the Nigerian regime has seen that the initial period of uncertainty is over and they have actually seized power. They are actually in control of the country now. And it's harder to get rid of a regime after a coup if it's not in the first like week, right? So now they feel they're in control of the country. Now they can talk. They can negotiate from a position of strength. I think that's what we're seeing here. And they were looking for a convenient excuse. So they first spoke with the, M the former Emir of Kano, Mohammed Sanusi. They, they spoke to the Islamic clerics. What they're doing there is they're saying, we're not responding to your ECOWAS power. <laughs> what we're responding to is, you know, all of your us. Your soft religious there. cultural power. 
right. respect. These are our heads. These are our 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 you know our traditional ruler, our royal highness, our our our, our man of God. You know, we do that that we listen to, not you, but because of them, just out of respect. <laughs> We will not talk with you. So, you, you know, yeah, we've seen this. We've seen this pattern before. The U.S. is praising our president, though. The U.S. is praising Tinubu for his leadership in this crisis at a time when um, so much public opinion here in Nigeria is against the intervention, you know. Um, and Tinubu seems to be spearheading this intervention. How do you interpret that? How do you interpret this difference of opinion and we've got about two two minutes 30 seconds before we have a break yeah yeah but this is just normal for the americans the americans have never cared what anybody in a country is saying about their leaders or anybody in a region is saying about the situation americans care first and foremost about america's own interest america's interest is to have a partner in niger republic that is anti-russia that is pro-france that will help them you know you know um fight the insurgency, but on America's terms. And so it takes us back to what Richard Nixon said about, you know, certain dictators in South America back in the day. Well, he's an SOB, but he's our SOB. That's always going to be the American way of looking at these things. Mm, okay. Let's see if we've got messages on WhatsApp. WhatsApp is 080-959-75805. We've got... Uh, okay, so lots of the messages... <laughs> <laughs> lots of <laughs> lots of the messages are uh, okay uh do we have any messages addressing the niger situation no we we do not so i'm going to <laughs> uh, what are, what are the messages addressing <laughs> um the, you know sandra you know i um, will miss you sandra thank you for all you've done sandra we love you sandra thank you and I love it, and, and I appreciate it, and I'm going to get to those messages eventually, but I, I, I want us to talk about what we're talking about on the show at the moment. So let's take a break. When we come back from this break, Lagos, we'll keep talking about Niger. We'll also talk about Trump and what he's facing um, in America um, at the moment. All round the clock. And now, because of your active listening and contribution, we are crowned the radio station of the year. We are incredibly humbled and honored to be standing on the solid ground of your trust on our programming. This recognition means so much to us, and we are deeply grateful for it. Thank you for making this possible. Thank you for choosing Nigeria Info. Thank you for answering our call. Nigeria Info. Let's talk. Hard, hard facts will be right back. Uplifting the nation through information. Uh, is it appropriate for a policeman to be searching through somebody's phone? No, no, no. It's wrong. The phone being that the... Hello, did you enjoy the visit to the museum with Lana and her friends? It's time for them to go home now, and I'll continue reading our story of Fun Days at the Museum. On the bus, their teachers asked them to eat their packed lunches because it was a long drive back to school. Lana's lunch was boiled plantain and liver sauce with biscuits. Lana didn't like boiled plantain, but she loved liver sauce, so she happily gobbled it up. Some of the other children had rice. Ayemi had a sandwich, and the twins got shawarma. Lana loved shawarma and planned to ask her dad to buy it over the weekend. Close to her, she noticed someone was sitting quietly. It was Ade. He had no food, and he just sat there looking sad while everyone enjoyed their lunch. Lana had some biscuits left over, so she offered them to Ade. Hello, Ade. Do you want some biscuits? His face lit up. Oh, thanks, Lana. Thank you. 
The ride back to school was much quieter as everyone was busy eating and soon they arrived back at school. The children had a good day full of fun, learning and lots more. Nana smiled to herself as she wondered where they would go on the next school trip and could not wait to tell her mom and dad all about her wonderful day. The end. I hope you enjoyed that story of Fun Day Out at the Museum by Chioma Moma. Send me an email on Storytime with Auntie Noma. That's Storytime with Auntie A-U-N-T-R-E. Noma is N-O-M-A. Storytime with Auntie Noma at yahoo.com. Follow on Instagram at auntie.noma. A-U-N-T-R-E dot N-O-M-A. For me, it's bye-bye. You've got big dreams. But you know it'll take hard work, determination, and sweat to achieve them. That's why you need Dubai Anti-Petrol Deodorant with 48-hour protection. Dubai keeps you unapologetically fresh and confident every day. Sweat it. Don't smell it. Get Dubai Anti-Petrol Deodorant today. Dubai is endorsed by the Nigerian Association of Dermatology. Me ask me now where people they see fuel, gas, and food stuff with them they carry. Oh, God, if it, you never hear. Say, waiting. Ah, the Oboje Agro Stores Relief Package for everyone to buy land with it this season. And you will get refill, refuel, regas, and recharge. Uh -huh. I beg, yeah, me make a hear. Enjoy up to 40 to 50 percent discount on top any land where you buy this season and trade balance within 12 to 24 months without gift. Or make you enjoy 30 percent discount and trade the balance within 48 months. Or make you get a refill or bag of rice, carton of noodles. Or make you get a regard, refuel, or recharge on top of any payment plan where you still pay as low as 500 naira or 080 See how I'm using Kona Eyes to look at you. As you keep pressing star 321 hash on your phone, is it not telling star to want to borrow from play? Yes, now. What happened? Has the code changed? <laughs> you see girl star three zero three hash is the new code to borrow credit and data on glow eh? so the code is no longer star three two one hash but star three zero three hash star star mental voila it won't go the funk go star three zero three hash not the for show uh, but guy i hope so the data where you borrow go reach me and you <laughs> dial star three zero three hash to borrow credit and data on glow and pay later star three zero three hash in the code in great ease Swashing liquid and enjoy more exciting moments as you tune in this all star season. Too sure, dishwashing liquid. Here be wash. Get in on the action with Betano, your exciting destination for thrilling sports betting. Enjoy an award winning experience with amazing betting options, cash out, and missions, as well as other features. Join now and get a welcome bonus of up to 100,000 naira. Betano.ag. The game starts now. Another season of the biggest reality show in Africa is here again. And the question is, how thirsty are you? Thirsty for more confirmed drama and battles? More nail-biting suspense? More confirmed bedroom? And of course, more of your refreshing bed scenes. So, I ask again, how thirsty are you? Enjoy all the excitement as you tune in this season with your cold and refreshing bottle of Pepsi. Pepsi, Confirm. Pepsi, thirsty for more. Welcome, Daddy. What would you like to have? Give me Afan and the correct swallow. How about you, Auntie? Egusi and the better swallow. You call my sister, Nijeda and the correct swallow, right? <laughs> you know what's up. Golden Penny Semovita. <laughs> That's right. Golden Penny Semovita is my sweet first choice. Made with premium wheat and enriched with vitamins. It's the right combo for Nigerian sweets. Golden Penny Semovita, my sweet first choice. As the earth warms, how will you bless the future? Emails, payment terms, the way you send messages. And you can imagine how a lot of processes have also changed over time. Now, digital assets and payment processes are changing how we see, make, and use money. Join Halima Zakaria Kuba expert on digital assets for free digital asset business summit on sunday 20th of august 2023 by 2 p.m at lagos travel inn hotel 
30 miles of 41 Tony Street, Ikejam, Lagos State. Get a free summit, or to reserve your seat, send yes to 070-4282-5204. Send yes to 070-4282-5204. There will be free digital asset freebies for the first 100% at the venue, and then support of between $500 and $10,000 for intending digital asset business owners. The free digital asset business summit, powered by How Digital Resources. Chief's 24 hour protection. Use on B to take your day. Now, Nigerian Dental Association. Tata Giviga with on B. Wake up, sleepy head. It's girls' day out. Fine. What's the plan for today? Okay, so we have a 9 a.m. hair and nail appointment with Sir Salmon. At 3 p.m., we're going to be watching a new superhero movie. Tad brings in Jamaica and his friends at 6. At 8, we're going to try out a new restaurant at the wharf and. Eh? That's in one day? How? Easy, my love. Start your day with a bowl of cereal made specially with Olympic milk. Hi. Let's get going. Enjoy the good life of Olympic milk to own your day. Olympic milk. Stay active. NS! NS to! Oh, that way thing happen. I don't send a go market. I be the only one. You got pharmacy. Don't be your boy, I be call you. I be ask for NS liver stock medicine. No, we come on any Yamayama discomfort for person. Be le, whether that has bone, constipation, or even skin injection. No, NS liver stock get lem, orange, and other thyroid flavor. With NS liver stock, we can let go day balance. We are the pharmacy. Summon me one. Make I go enjoy for you. NS liver stock, skin medicine, where they make your benekulele. Russian tiny pharmacy, go buy your own now. Now, product of Nestem Pharmaceutical Limited. If you're on Nigeria Sunfarm Network, you get a super gift of 1,000 naira for just joining the network. You're welcome. 900% bonus on every recharge, 100% data bonus for six months, and double data bonus on your first recharge of the month. That's the nine confirmed plan from Nine Mobile, and it's lit. So get a new SIM or dial star 1400 hash and start browsing, sharing, and creating more on Nigeria Confirm Network. Nine Mobile, here for you, here for Nigeria. Discover Lipton's flavorful and balanced tea. With our unique expertise, we select fine quality tea leaves from selected tea gardens around the world. Experience Lipton Yellow Label's flavorful and balanced taste in every sip. Discover Lipton's flavorful and balanced taste. No matter what I do, you love me unconditionally. Show for me every day, no matter where you in my life. A mother's love is unconditional. Nothing serves this love better than a bowl of Indomie. So, show some love with Indomie. You don't arrange better odds. Cut it is be a miyako. And you get better, better, a cap bonus self day. This one, a new and better journeyman team. Go play your bet for betfield.com. Arrange the promo code 3 bet if you take some of your bet free of charge. That's spelling, that's betting.
Super 2 Live since 1959. It's the job of season with Super Commando Energy Drink on the biggest TV reality show in Nigeria. And the action never stops. Catch all the jaw-dropping drama, the heart-pumping excitement, and catch all the energy moments with your Super Commando in hand. Because if you snooze, <laughs> you'll definitely lose. Super, super, super. Commando Energy Drink throughout this jump up season. Super Commando Energy Drink. Fire on. My kids love to taste the snacks, but many snacks are not so good for them. That's why I love the new Milo Anna snack. Mmm, Milo Big Mom. Yes, it's a delicious snack with the goodness of malt, milk, cocoa, and crunchy Niger roll base containing calcium, iron, and fiber. So, pack Milo Anna snacks in your lunchbox every day to help your kids refuel at break time and keep winning all day. Milo, energy to go further. Milo! Wow, what's that? It's not a smell. It's... it's a feeling. Yeah, just like confidence. Mm, just like power. <laughs> like old day deodorant roll-on. Yeah, yeah, like you! Let your essence announce you. Buy your old day roll on today from stores near you. We're back. We're back. We're back. We're back. We are back. We're back. We're back. On 99.3 Nigeria This is Global Review on Hard Facts. I'm Sandra Ezekwesili. We are still in Niger talking about the coup there, the crisis as a result of that coup. All of this week, we've seen meetings, we've seen various organs meeting, we've seen various organs of the ECOWAS, we've seen various uh, organs of um, African Union. We still don't have much clarity or consensus about what should happen next. My guest on the show is a friend of Hard Facts. He's a regular guest on Global Review, Chief Andy Oboforibo. Before the break, we talked about the U.S.'s response. We talked about the AU's response. We talked about ECOWAS military chiefs uh, meeting. Uh, we also talked about the body language from the hunter. Um, now, let's talk about Africans and their reaction to this thing, especially younger Africans. They are having an ideological debate about democracy, about civilian rule, about military rule. A lot of people are saying that based on the failure of elected civilian governments to bring development and human rights, we really cannot make an argument against military rule anymore. Or at least we cannot just say eh, military rule is, best than, is, is worse than civilian rule, no matter what. You know, They say that now. What do you say to that, Chief? Okay. So I think let me start by saying that all the criticisms about the failure of um, civilian rule, especially civilian rule coming with elections and um, constitutional democracy in Africa, all these criticisms are valid. We have seen widespread, especially in West Africa, widespread failure of these you know, constitutional democracies, elected leadership to provide leadership. Uh, in economic development, in transparency, in human rights. We, all these things are true. You know, I'm not going to argue that. Uh, it's also true that we saw the same failure under the military, right? We saw the same abject failure. For everybody who says to me, oh, military are more disciplined, military are not corrupt. You get why would they say abacha loot, right? It's abacha loot, it's not shagari loot. Eh? <laughs> it's not tafa balewa loot. Uh, it's not Nambi Azikiwe loot. It's a bachelor loot, right? You get why we talk about oil windfall, Gulf War oil windfall that that disappeared during the IDB regime, right? These things all happened under the military, right? And so the military also stole. The military also um, destroyed human rights, trampled on human rights. The military also underdeveloped Africa. So if anything that you're saying that it, that civilian governments have done, the military also did, right? And I, I say, okay, if you, if, you, if you want to say, oh, no, give the military a chance. I say, well, look at the people who have been your 
chief of army staffs and your chief of defense staffs, you know, are these the people you want running your country, right? Uh, like, it's just that, that simple. Look at it that way. So, okay, now we said that both have given us bad results. Now, what we're supposed to do is not say, okay, the one that's giving us bad results right now, let's leave it and go back to the one that gave us bad results yesterday. That's foolishness. <laughs> what we have to do is we have to ask ourselves, is there a way to improve on the bad results from either the military or the civilians, right? Let's be open-minded for a moment. Now, here's my question. Nigerians or West Africans woke up one day and decided that our mumu don't do. And we want to face our governments and go with them, fire for fire, leg for leg. Yeah, we hold them accountable no matter what. Who is more likely to bow to the people? Is it civilians or is it the military? Right? My view is that the reason why democracy has failed in West Africa to give us the results we want is that we have not, we the people, have not made democracy democratic enough. We keep expecting people who are ruling us to do the right thing just because they are there. Oh, I want to believe that they will do the right thing. But until we make it ungovernable for people who read elections, until we make it ungovernable for people who send tokens and prayers, until we make it ungovernable for people who, who like, you know, off their mics and who tell us that they are influencing their wife's court cases, until we just like refuse to be reasonable and just keep pushing it to the wall and not giving them a breathing space, we will keep having the same results that look like military error. And then we will just say, eh, democracy hasn't worked. Democracy hasn't worked because we refuse to do the difficult things needed to make it work. Now, let's, That's my view. let's move to one of the oldest uh, democracies in the world, the United States, facing their own drama. Former President Donald Trump has been indicted for a fourth time, chief, this time in Georgia. He has gone from the first U.S. ex-president to be indicted to the first U.S. president to be indicted twice, to the first one indicted three times, and now he has broken that record again. The state of Georgia is accusing Trump and 18 co-defendants of trying to overturn the 2020 election. What are they? What what exactly are they saying he did? Yeah. So basically, this Georgia indictment it comes down to two big um, like issues multiple charges but you can boil it down to two things thing number one is that uh, allegedly trump called the attorney general of the state of georgia when he saw yes state of georgia when he saw that he was losing by eleven thousand seven hundred and eighty eight votes or so he called the guy up and said uh can't you find some other eleven thousand seven hundred and eighty nine votes for me like basically allegedly asked the attorney, um, sorry, the Secretary of State of the state of Georgia to read the election for him. So that's one, to manufacture votes to give him the election so he could win the election by one vote. That's one. Thing number two is that um, basically he and his co-conspirators conspirators allegedly tried to create what the American system, it's an electoral college. So let's say Georgia has five electoral votes. I can't remember the number, but let's just say it's five. When the state votes, and the state votes for Joe Biden, right, then that means Georgia's five electoral votes go to Joe Biden. What now happens is that the state of Georgia will choose five people to be their electors, to go to Washington, D.C., and formally cast the vote for Joe Biden. Those five people are legally obligated to vote for Biden. They can't change their mind and vote for for Trump or vote for me because under the law, they're just there as a rubber stamp. But now, allegedly, what Trump did was he created a new list of electors and him and Rudy Giuliani allegedly and tried to get officials in the state from the governor down to approve that list and told those people to go and say, no, not Trump, we will vote for, not Biden. 
which would basically change the election results in Georgia. Right. So that's rigging the election. And so that's the allegation. That's what he's facing. But Georgia has a Republican governor. How come the state is prosecuting a Republican ex-president? That's the beauty of the American system, Sandra. So the, um, the district attorney, the DA, who is doing this prosecution is a Democrat. Um, she, she, um, her name is um, Fally Williams. She was elected from Fulton County. DAs are elected at the county level. Yeah. And counties are a bit like local government, yeah. right? Yeah. So she's a local government's prosecutor. And she decided, oh, something illegal happened, in my opinion, in my jurisdiction. The president, ex-president is behind it. I'm going to prosecute him. And under the law, the state government can't stop her. And the state government has to go along with what she's doing and actually give her the support. So that would be like the chief legal officer of Etiosa prosecuting. Yes. Uh, you know, let's say the chief legal officer of Etiosa is maybe. Prosecuting Buhari. Maybe in PDP. Yeah, yes, let's say. Right. In PDP, yes. Prosecuting and Buhari. To prosecute Buhari. And, right. and, and, and the attorney general of the state, mm -hmm. who is an APC man, mm -hmm. has to agree. It's beautiful. A lot of Republicans, as a lot of Republicans, especially the presidential aspirants, they are insisting that these cases are a political witch hunt against Trump. On the other hand, Democrats insist that this is simply the rule of law taking its course. Who is more correct, Chief? Yes. <laughs> it's, it's both, Sandra. It's both. Because, and, and that's the way the American system is built. It's built to be adversarial, right? So put it this way. If Trump had been a Democrat, Fally Williams, this Democratic DA mm -hmm. in Fulton County, mm -hmm. would not be going after Trump right now. Probably mm -hmm. not. Mm -hmm. It would be very difficult to find a Democrat DA mm -hmm. going after an, a Democrat ex-president. Mm -hmm. Also very hard to find a Republican DA going after a Republican ex-president. It's just simple party politics. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. That does not mean that there isn't a case to answer, right? right? So part of what you do in partisan politics is when there is a case against your opponent, you go and take up the case. The question now becomes, is the case based on facts? Look, at the end of the day, it was Republicans who impeached Clinton. At the end of the day, it was Democrats who impeached Nixon, right? But Clinton was guilty and Nixon was guilty, right? Um, Democrats wanted to impeach Bush they couldn't find enough on him, and they let it go. Republicans wanted to impeach Obama. They couldn't find enough on him. They let it go. And so it's not enough to just be partisan. It's not enough to call it a witch hunt. Is there evidence? If he didn't do, he didn't do. But with Trump, <laughs> he, he did. He did. The evidence seems to be there. The thing's dead. All right. Uh, speaking about yeah. things we're dead, we've got uh, money to give you, Yes. We have money to give away and testimonies have been rolling in.
Okay? You know that you can play as many times as you like, you can turn the cell to turn the cell, but do not forget to play Rico. Sweet, we've been hearing a lot about Rico in all of this. What exactly is Rico? Chief? All right, doesn't look like we have Chief on the line anymore. Lagos, let's come back to you. Oh, uh, yes, you do, Sandra. Oh, okay. Uh, yes, sorry, I was speaking on mute. Okay. Uh, sorry. <laughs> yes, yes, RICO is, con is conspiracy in America. Basically, RICO is a set of um, crimes where basically if all of us, if they, they don't need to find that I have committed a crime mm. for me to go to prison for the crime. All they need to find is that me and you and Feta and Sheriff are all in a gang together or a group together. Okay. And that one of us committed a crime and we committed that crime to benefit the group, then all of us fit enter the problem. <laughs> and not just to enter the problem, but now, no matter what the crime was, even if the crime was a relatively minor crime, you can now get 20 years in prison for it and, you know, so for big money. So what they're saying is that Trump, Rudy Giuliani, and 18 of their friends gathered together and formed a little clickety click to try and hijack the election. And that's Rico. That's, that's conspiracy. So I've got 30 seconds left. Will Trump run or will these charges stop him? It's up to America. Under, like, America's laws are a bit fuzzy about this. Can an indicted, impeached um, man run for president? The founding fathers never assumed that somebody would want to still run for president after being indicted. They thought he would just be too honorable to even attempt it. But Trump has said, honors for suckers. <laughs> so we're about to find out what American institutions will do about this. I have, I have my popcorn. This is going to be better than Oppenheimer. This is going to be better than Oppenheimer, Chief Andy Abofferbo says. Chief, thank you so much. For being a part of Hard Facts, thank you so much for being a part of my journey here. You are one of the guests that I love to talk to on the show. I know that Lagos loves to talk to you. Lagos loves to hear your thoughts about the different things that we talk about. So thank you for sharing your mind with us, your insights with us. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Like I always say, it's always a pleasure. It has always been thank you. And thank you for everything you've done for us, for me, and Thank you once again. All right, Lagos, stay here. Coming up at 5 o'clock, let's go to the legislative arm of government. Every Friday, every uh, Thursday, <laughs> Thursday at 5, we bring you eyes and nays. On eyes and nays, we focus on the legislative arm of government. What did they do for day? Which laws did they debate? Which laws did they want to pass? How did they perform their oversight function? That's the conversation we have on this segment of Hard Facts, I'm Sandra Ezekwesili. You're listening to Hard Facts on 99.3 Nigeria Info. Don't go away. Mm -hmm.